Hi everyone, I recently had a question around how can someone put uh, dynamically show and hide buttons on a form. Now in Nutex New Responsive Forms for Office 365 we don't actually have a button control, we really just have the action panel at the bottom. And these have two functions, either close the form or submit the form. And that's what you want of someone really to, to either submit some data or don't submit the data. There's no other sort of um, things that you could extrapolate that to say, hey, I'd like a button to start a workflow. And sure, you can you can you can request that feature in in user voice or anything like that. But what we're talking about generally in a form, you're either submitting data or you're looking at the data and then cancelling out. So these two buttons really serve most purposes. You could argue that save and continue is a is another type of button that we have, and you certainly can have that and submit the data. Again, it's still submitting the data but keeping the form open. So how would I go about making the button more contextual. So this customer was asking, um, I want to have a button that is more contextual to what the user is doing. And what this customer was doing was rather than using task forms to really tailor the experience for the person approving that, um, that task, they want to have a person submit a form and the workflow would then send them an email to say, please review or approve or whatever it might be, or probably, probably review. Uh, so they might come into this form and put some comments in and then press submit. But they don't want it to just say submit. They want, might say something like um, send, to, send to manager for review or uh, send to finance for approval or whatever it might be. So how do we contextualize this button based on, on, uh, on the status of the form? So if we look at uh, my list here, I've got a title and a status column. And so this is replicated in my form here. We've got a title and a status. So the first thing I would do is we come to status column, uh, column or control, and I'd give it a default value. I'd say pending uh, submission. So this is when the person first opens up the form. They open it up and it gives a status of pending submission. Now I don't want that person to edit that field. It's a status field. I want that to be read only. So we say read only is yes. So they open up the form. It says pending submission, which is great. And then it just says submit. And I don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, you could put labels in there and explain to them when you press submit, it's going to go to your manager for approval. Or you could make it a bit more dynamic and say, uh, let's copy the value here and add a rule. And we might say status uh, equals pending submission. Then the action panel submit button text is uh, submit for manager approval. That kind of works, doesn't it? So we'll put that in there and if we go to preview, now it gives me a bit more contextual information, submit to my manager for approval rather than just submit. So now we've got that going, we can actually test that out. We're gonna go publish and we're gonna jump back to here and we'll press refresh. If I click on new and open up the new form, this is the initiator starting the process. So he opens up the form, it says pending submission and he says submit to my manager for approval. And so I can say, hello, Mr. Boss man. Or woman, or person. There we go. Uh, submit for manager approval. So I click on submit for manager approval. Now, what's happening is the status control is connected to the status column, and the status column now says pending submission. Now, what you would then do is have a workflow behind the scenes. It recognizes that a a submission is being made, and then it would update the status through the workflow to say something like. And I'm just going to cheat a little bit here because I don't really want to create a a workflow today. We will say it is pending pending manager approval. That'll do. Uh, I'll just copy that because we need that. Okay, so the workflows change it to pending manager approval. Now, if I open this up again, it's not going to behave the way we want. It uh, so we go to edit and it just says submit. Now, that's because our rule was saying if pending submission status equals pending submission or oh sorry if status equals pending submission it's going to put that otherwise it just defaults to what it usually does so what we want to do is have another rule very very similar where we say pending manager approval so if the status equals pending manager approval then we're going to say um, action panel submit button text is submit to finance for approval something like that I'm really making this up as we go so we're going to create that rule and we go publish and we'll jump back to our form and press F5. So we're refreshing the form. It comes back to view mode and I can click on edit mode. Now it says submit to finance for approval because it says pending manager approval. So those two rules really just help us contextualize that button for them. Now 
when you're using your workflow to set the status, I'd probably also recommend that you're doing setting item permissions through your workflow as well. So by that I mean you might say the initiator submits. Once he's submitted, I would take his permissions away and give him a read only. And then you might give the manager uh, edit permission so he can actually put his comments in here. But you wouldn't give finance um, view or edit just yet. Not until they've got the next stage, which is uh, a finance approval. Now, the, the, the scenario that uh, the customer was talking about was potentially a, a status field or, or a comments field or whatever it might be. And so we might say, um, and you could bind these to different different columns. So you might have different columns for, um, for, the, for the different approval stages. So let's go and publish that. And what we might do is close that and add a column multiple lines of text, uh, manager comments. So I'll save that one and we'll come back to our form and press refresh. The reason why I'm refreshing is because the form designer needs to get the the form uh, the, the list context. It doesn't know there was a comments field. So now I can come back here and connect this to the manager comments. So we call this manager comments, manager comments. Now, if I'm the manager, um, I shouldn't be able to change the, 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 submit, the submitted field. So how do we allow the manager to fill this field out and not actually update the title? And maybe let's just get rid of attachments to make it simpler. So the status is always read and then that gets changed throughout the workflow and, and um, through the field. Title is only ever for the requester. So what you could do here, there's a couple of different options here. You could say um, read only, um, what you could do is you could do form mode. If form mode is new, um, then it will be editable uh, title. Yeah, that's right. So we go preview and edit and display. I've got it around the wrong way. So let's say the title, it's only in read only mode. Um, let me think. It's, it's, it's read only. Um, if, if edit mode is true, that is read only. Sorry, I got it ran the wrong way. If edit mode is true, is yes, then it's read only. So we've got a preview. In 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 new mode, it's editable. Uh, edit mode, it's it's not editable. And display mode is not editable. Nothing's editable. So you could get around it that way. That's one way to do it. Or you could get a bit more advanced if you really felt like it. You can come in here and you could say, if else condition, you might say something like uh, form mode. Form mode um, is edit or form mode uh, is uh, display um, and then you'd say uh, yes and no. Okay, let's check if I got my logic right. So if else so equals um, true, is it true? True, I think, or well, yes. I can't remember logic myself. True. Let's put true and see what happens. Um, false. I think it's true and false, actually. True. False. There we go. So, so the outputs of a boolean are either true or false. So we're going to check if if um, if, if uh, edit mode is true or if uh, display mode is true, then return true. Otherwise, it's obviously detecting it's in. Uh, new mode and we false. So let's insert that and see what happens on that one. Again, so we're in new mode, edit and display, the fields are disabled. Now that's that's a different way you could disable that field and another way you could do it is something like, uh, let's put a label here and explain what this means. So we go to label and we'd say something like uh, context. We need some context things. We might say current user email, uh, we'll just call this uh, current user email, if I could type, there we go. And we'll also do another one, we'll say insert uh, context item created by email. So let's just, uh, so item created by, so let's just go down here, oops, item created by. Now the reason why I like to put these out, I like to, I like to test things and check them out and those sort of things. I'm going to publish that. I'm going to go back to my form. I'm going to open up uh, Mr. Boss Man, and what I'm checking to do is, well, I'm going to build my logic on this. So I'm going to say if um, 
if current user email equals item created by is true, then disable the field or whatever it might be, uh, ignoring this for a moment. So what we then do is we come back to the form and we might say something like, um, I mean, you could do it through rules if you wanted to, or you could do it through variables. Um, you could say something like, if um, context current user email is equal to uh, context item created by email is true, then uh, title uh, read only is no, otherwise title read only is yes. So uh, make title read only. All right, so we create that rule. And let's go back to the designer and make sure that this is actually cleared. And now we go to preview and actually let's go and publish that and test it out. Okay, so we've refreshed that. Now we're not actually setting the read only through the property anymore. So if I go to edit mode, so I am the person that actually created that submission so it's editable for me. Um, so I've sort of simulated that a bit, but you get the idea. So you could put a bunch of different logic in there around if 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 the creator and the person opening the form is the same, then um, do a rule, or you could do it through the property config panel here as well. So, and then you could do it, you could apply the same logic in the manager. You could do something like um, if the status is equal to um, not pending submission, but pending manager approval, or you know, if it's pen, if status equals pending manager approval, then you make this editable. If it's not, then you then you disable it. So um, that's how I would kind of solve that uh, requirement around uh, dynamic buttons. Uh, certainly have a bit of a play, have a think. There's been a lot we've we've kind of covered in this session. So um, yeah, if you find this useful, let me know in the comments. Or if you'd like to see something else, certainly let me know. Cheers.